Welcome to IGCSE Topic 3. We're going to be looking at three chemical families. Uh, the Group 1, Alkali Metals. Group 7, the Halogens. And Group 0, the Noble Gases. We'll start by looking at Group 1, the Alkali Metals. Lithium, Sodium, Potassium, Rubidium and Cesium. We're going to be looking at uh, patterns and trends in their reactivity as we go down the group and the reasons for those um, patterns and trends. Let's have a look at the physical properties of these Group 1 metals. Well, they are metals, so they are going to have the usual properties of metals. They are good conductors of electricity, good conductors of heat. Uh, they're shiny when they're freshly cut, not if you leave them out in oxygen for a while or in air for a while. They will oxidise and tarnish on the outside, becoming dull. Uh, sonorous, I have no idea. Um, people probably haven't made a bell out of sodium. It probably wouldn't work. It wouldn't last very long in the tower. Uh, ductile, uh, yeah, they can be drawn to wires. Uh, they are malleable also. Um, however, the two uh, things that aren't usual for metals is their melting point and density. Uh, they have a, uh, lower than, um, a lower melting point than most metals. For example, sodium melts at roughly 97 degrees Celsius. And density, they have a low density. We'll see that they actually float on top of water. So the general trends of the Group 1 metals, they become softer as we move down the group, they become more dense as we move down, and they have a melting point and boiling point which becomes lower as we go down the group also. Group 1 metals are very reactive, um, so we have to store them under oil. Um, by storing them under oil, we prevent them from uh, getting access to oxygen in the air and also water, and therefore we can keep them for a long time um, in the oil. The reaction between the alkali metal and water is exothermic. That means it's giving out heat, it's generating heat. So the metal will melt, forming a ball as it moves around the surface. The hydrogen gas which is being produced in the reaction will propel the ball around the surface and you will um, hear fizzing and you will see gas being produced. Let's find out why the Group 1 metals are called alkali metals. The reason is that when a Group 1 metal reacts with water, it produces an alkali solution. Let's have a look at the example for sodium. Sodium reacts with water to produce sodium hydroxide and hydrogen gas. Sodium hydroxide is the alkali. This can be tested by adding an indicator, for example, universal indicator, and we will see a purple, a dark blue colour being produced by the universal indicator. Group 1 metals will react with Group 7 elements very readily. Uh, the reason is that Group 1 metals uh, will lose an electron uh, to gain a full outer shell. Group 7 elements will gain an electron to get a full outer shell. So, sodium metal will lose an electron to become Na+, or sodium ion. Chlorine will gain an electron to become Cl-, um, or the chloride ion. There is a very vigorous reaction between sodium metal and chlorine gas, producing a lot of heat and light. Let's have a look at the reactivity, or why we have the reactivity that we have in Group 1. As you move down the group, as we've said earlier, it becomes increasingly uh, reactive. If we have a look at the electron configurations of the first three, lithium 2,1, Sodium is 281 and potassium is 2881. We have protons and neutrons in the nucleus. Remind ourselves that protons have a positive charge, and going around the outside, we have our electrons which have a negative charge. There is attraction between the protons in the nucleus and the electrons in the shells going around the nucleus. The distance between the outer electron and the nucleus for lithium is very small. Let's compare this to the distance between the outer electron and the nucleus for potassium, which is much larger. Now, if we remember that group 1 metals react by losing the outer electron and forming a positively charged ion, then lithium finds it more difficult to lose its outer electron compared to potassium. Potassium, with its greater distance between the pull of the nucleus in the centre and the outer electron, finds it easier to lose the outer electron. By losing its electron, it's reacting. Therefore, potassium is more reactive and lithium will be less reactive. The halogens, these are the elements in group 7 of the periodic table. They are non-metals and they have coloured vapours. The halogen elements consist of molecules made up of pairs of atoms. So, for example, chlorine 
will not go around by itself as an element it will go around as Cl2, so it's a pair. There are some trends in the physical properties of the halogens. As we go down group 7 we will see an intensity of colour which increases. Um, we have fluorine which is a gas that is yellow, chlorine which is a gas uh, that is green, bromine liquid which is a dark red liquid and forms uh, red brown vapour and we've got iodine which will be a solid at room temperature um, is a dark grey solid with purple vapours. And as we see that the elements go from gas, gas, liquid, solid, therefore the melting point increases and the boiling point also increases as you move down the group. Group 7 elements can react in two ways to produce a full outer shell or complete their outer shell and become stable. One is by gaining electrons, forming an ionic bond. In doing so, they have a minus one charge that is formed as they've gained an electron, reminding ourselves that electrons are negative. So the halide ions that are formed will get fluoride F minus, chloride Cl minus, bromide Br minus, and iodide I minus. When group seven elements react with metals, they form ionic salts. What we can see is that the metal will form a positively charged metal ion as it loses an electron, for example, lithium, And what we will see is that electron will move across to a halide, for example, bromine, which has seven in the outside shell. It gains that electron from the lithium, becoming negatively charged. And we now have two ions, one with a plus charge, one with a minus charge. These will then attract. Um, what we will form here is a giant ionic lattice, which is being held together by these electrostatic attractions. And we will have a salt produced. The other way in which group seven elements can complete their outer shell, getting eight, is to form covalent compounds. In doing so, they are sharing electrons, which is a covalent bond. So for example, hydrogen can react with chlorine to produce um, hydrogen chloride, HCl. And in doing so, the hydrogen provides an electron and shares it with chlorine. The chlorine provides an electron and shares it with hydrogen. Therefore, chlorine has its full outer shell and hydrogen has its full outer shell. And we have a compound which is covalent. Fluorine is very reactive, chlorine less so, bromine less so, and iodine even less. The reason is that these elements need to gain an electron to complete their outer shell. What can pull an electron in is the protons in the, the nucleus. Protons are positively charged. So we've got a positively charged nucleus that can attract an electron to complete the outer shell. So fluorine's nucleus is close to the outer shell and therefore can pull an electron or attract an electron more easily than bromine can because the distance between bromine's nucleus and the outer shell is much larger. Therefore, reactivity decreases down group 7, fluorine being the most reactive, iodine being the least. The reactivity of group 7 elements can be seen with a series of displacement reactions. If we remind ourselves that chlorine is the most reactive when we compare chlorine, bromine and iodine, we will see that chlorine will undergo two displacement reactions, displacing both uh, bromine and iodine from solutions of potassium bromide and potassium iodide. Uh, bromine, however, will only displace iodine from a solution of potassium iodide. It will not displace chlorine from a solution of potassium chloride. And iodine, being the least reactive, will displace neither chlorine from potassium chloride or bromine from potassium bromide. If we take a closer look at two of the displacement reactions, if we have some chlorine water, which is basically just a solution of chlorine in water, and we react it with a colourless solution of potassium bromide, then we see that the solution turns orange as the bromine itself is formed in the solution. If we then also look at the reaction of bromine water with potassium iodide, again potassium iodide is colourless, what we will see is the formation of a dark red-brown coloration in the solution as iodine is formed in the solution. These reactions are examples of redox reactions, redox being reduction and oxidation reactions which are simultaneously happening. Um, so if we were to look at more closely the reaction of uh, bromine water with uh, potassium iodide, what we see is that iodine is formed in solution and we also form potassium bromide. To remind ourselves what reduction and oxidation mean, we use the term oil rig. 
oil rig oxidation is loss, reduction is gain of electrons. If we take a look at what is happening in terms of electrons when bromine reacts with potassium iodide, what we see is the bromine atoms gain electrons to become bromide ions and therefore if they are gaining electrons and we use rig reduction is gain, the halogen is being reduced. If we have a look what's happening with the iodine ions, they are losing electrons to become iodine atoms. If they're losing electrons, oil, oxidation is loss, that means they're being oxidized. Group 0 are the noble gases. They have four outer shells. They are unreactive because of this. They neither need to gain or lose electrons. They are monoatomic. That means that their molecules consist of single atoms only. Let's have a look at some of the physical properties. Their gases. Their density and boiling point increases as you move down the group. The density increases as the atoms get heavier. The boiling point also increases as the atoms get heavier. This is because the attraction between one molecule and its neighbour gets stronger as the atoms get bigger. So you have to put more energy in to break apart this stronger attraction. Even though the noble gases are colourless, when they're excited in a discharge tube, they produce different colours. And they can be used to produce signs that have a unique colour for each atom uh, that can be used for, for example, advertising. Other uses of noble gases include helium in balloons, which we all know will give us a nice squeaky voice when we inhale it. Um, also, we can put argon, for example, inside a light bulb. Um, this will provide an inert environment uh, for the tungsten to glow red hot without actually burning or oxidizing, so you have a long life for your bulb.